You know, when it comes to defining media as mainstream, people with disabilities are mainstream in terms of the absolute number of people. There are a staggering number of people either with disabilities or families who have a member who has a disability. It's not, it was always uh, kind of them and us. I don't, I don't see it as them and us anymore. I really believe that if you can uh, get the word out, and you know, media is media. Media is good, media is bad, media is interested in frivolous things, occasionally media is interested in serious things. Media follows the pack, occasionally you get a breakout person who does a report on this or that. What you have to do is be an advocate for yourself or your situation or your family, and by doing that, you take the community along with you. You know, I never, uh, I never put much stock in, in either praising or, or criticizing an industry because I don't think it's fruitful. I don't think that, you know, when you hear a politician, mainstream media, that, or uh, left wing or right wing, it's just, you know, let them have that meaningless discussion. To me, what I care about is are we seeing an accurate reflection of American life? Are we really seeing what the reality is for people on the main streets and the rural communities of our nation? And the answer is, generally speaking, not nearly enough. Uh, the people who command the attention tend to be those who have the loudest voices, those who have the slickest public relations. Uh, you know, I've always lamented the fact that, uh, you know, we exist sometimes uh, in the closet, people with disabilities are those who have been their advocates. It has been a family internal kind of, uh, of issue. And what has to happen is we have to be our own best advocate. We have to be our own public relations people when it comes to bringing attention to a specific disability or a need or a solution to a problem. We have to be the proactive, and I know that to use even a word like proactive is kind of lame, kind of 60s, but it really, it really is meaningful because if we don't tell the stories, if the families with disabilities don't tell the stories, the stories won't be told. People won't seek us out. There's no right to attention on the public stage. You've got to create it yourself. You've got to bring the story uh, to the uh, to a place where people can uh, get uh, 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 where people can confront the data, where people can understand the situation if they are ignorant of it, where people can make their own priorities, where people can, uh, you know, there is in this country a national, a, a natural, instinctive compassion. There is in this country a desire for equality. Sometimes it gets stifled. Sometimes it gets suppressed. Uh, by, uh, uh, you know, the screechiest or loudest voices and the squeaky wheel getting the attention. But I, I don't advocate being squeaky wheels, but I advocate helping the public with the information, helping craft the story so they appreciate where on the grand scale of public priorities this particular issue should fall. And people understand that the community of the disabled is more like them than it is not like them. At the time I did the Willowbrook stories, I really had no personal exposure to developmental disabilities. I, it just had not affected me and my family at that time. Since then, various offspring and relatives, you know, I've become, like every other family, we become, uh, you know, aware of uh, this or that situation. And so it was a slam in my heart and my soul and my psyche when I was exposed to the very worst because I, I learned about the disability by seeing the very worst example of how to deal with a disability. You know, Willowbrook was exactly the way you should not approach, you know, fixing the situation. Uh, so I, I was outraged, I was uh, uh, stunned, I was shocked, I educated myself. In, in, a, in a way that was a kind of crash course and became an advocate in a sense. But it has been, in a very real way, 
one of the most meaningful experiences of my entire life. It not only broadened my horizon, I know that sounds lame and cliched, but it really did open my eyes. Uh, you know, and I was of the old school where there was a hesitation to approach a person with a disability, where you had a, a feeling that, uh, uh, you know, you averted your eye even to a person in a wheelchair in those days. It was, uh, you know, uh, so, uh, uh, so such a dose of cold water uh, in a life that you want it to be 1950s, Ozzie and Harriet, everything swell, and we're all fun, and we're all going to be on the football team, we'll be the cheerleader, and we're all going to have a great life and have two cars and a house in the suburbs, and, you know, and, 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 you know to see a person with disabilities or to be exposed to, uh, uh, you know, a social problem, which was at that point as deep and as in need of attention, was something that uh, in the frivolous world that existed up until that point, uh, was, uh, uh, you know, the rule rather than the exception. Now, you know, it is unavoidable. Now we have to uh, confront it. Now you have to deal with your own inner prejudices. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, my children don't have any of the hang-ups that I had when I was their age. They have none. They, they have no color, uh, you know, uh, uh, hang-ups. They have no, you know, uh, uh, p person in a wheelchair, person with... Uh, CP or MD or whatever the alphabet uh, of your particular affliction is. They, they have no uh, inhibitions in any sense. They don't judge people by the packaging uh, as I did in those days. It's a, it's a much different world that we live in now. Does that mean that we fix the problem? No, of course not. I mean, obviously, uh, just being in this auditorium makes things clear. There's, a, there's miles to go before we sleep. But for God's sake, we have to realize and congratulate ourselves on all the miles that are already thankfully behind us and what we have to guard against, uh, not only dealing with the situations like waiting lists for care and et cetera, is allowing the system to fall back because we become silent, because we, become, uh, we lose a uh, advocacy, where we stop speaking for ourselves. We have to guard against that. We can't go backwards. There's only one direction now. Uh, the direction is that every child born in this country has the same rights, regardless of packaging, regardless of skin color or region or religion or anything else. We all have the same rights. We're all in this together, brother and sister. And that's, I think, the bottom line. Disabilities are easy to ignore if you choose to ignore them and look the other way. This is a very complicated world. We have a lot of problems. The stock market is bust. Uh, unemployment is growing week by week. People are struggling with their day-to-day -day existences. People don't want to be reminded that they also have an, uh, another uh, compassionate burden as Americans. That we have to be involved in improving the plight of everyone. We've got to give everyone equal opportunity. We have to be in this together in tough times and in boom times. And if necessary, we have to be the educators. You know, we, I understand that many of the curricula were written by people who are not exposed to it or have their own priorities or their own beef or their own angle. I get it. I understand it. I understand that there are many issues and causes competing for attention on the center stage of, of, of public life. But we will be that advocate. We will be that person. We will. I mean, that, one of the things that Sarah Palin, God bless her, you know, she, she has a child with Down syndrome. What, what would have been in the old days, I don't know, but I can suspect. And the fact that she for whatever reason, and I, I, I hope and I wish and I believe it was for the best of reasons, said she would be an advocate for children with special needs. We need more advocates like that. We need more people to stand up and say, you know, I'm for that, and so should you be, and let's be in this together. You know, and I believe that it is attainable, it is achievable, we've come a long way and we've got a long way to go, but let's look at the glass as half full rather than half empty.